All right, what up YouTube? We're gonna do an awesome video today. I'm gonna teach you guys how to turn any old laptop, specifically a Mac, into a hardware wallet. So we're gonna make our own quote unquote ledger out of this laptop. This is the safest way, in my personal opinion, to protect your crypto and keep your crypto safe. So the idea is that we want a device that we can access our crypto from that we don't ever connect to online. So we're gonna wipe this Mac completely clean. I also bought a refurbished Mac mini from Amazon for $115. Now, unfortunately they shipped me, <laughs> they shipped me a Mac mini that they didn't wipe, that wasn't refurbished, that had 300 gigs worth of this guy's personal information all on this device. So after I wiped it and then tried to reboot it, it was just, it was trash. So the computer was bad itself. The processor was bad. So, so I took my old MacBook, my 2017 MacBook. This does not have the M1 chip in it. We're going to wipe it. We're going to install Zellcore. We're going to install Chainweaver and we're going to disconnect it from the internet completely. And I'm going to show you guys how to deposit Bitcoin, USDC or Tether, Kadena and Flux. And we're going to do all of that on Zellcore. And then I'm also going to show you guys how to download and set up Chainweaver and then also send over some crypto to Chainweaver as well. So you always want to have multiple crypto wallets. You never want to have all of your crypto in one place. And you always, 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 always want to have a separate PC. So if I want to interact with DeFi, I'm going to send Kadena from this PC to my other crypto wallet, to my actual DeFi wallet. And that's the wallet I'm going to use. I only keep, you know, a few grand in there, 1% of my portfolio on there to interact with DeFi. It's all about just saving my wealth and protecting my wealth. I think Kadena, Bitcoin, and Flux are assets that are going to gain on average of 50, 100, 200, up to 500% every single year for the next five to 10 years. I don't care about staking them. I don't want to give Celsius or any of these Ponzi proof of stake protocols the opportunity to steal my crypto. Not going to happen. So we're going to keep it safe. We're going to keep it real. And if you guys are ready, let's dive deep. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to wipe our mat clean. So we're going to hold the power button completely powered on the Mac. The Mac needs to be completely off. Now we're going to grab our keyboard and we're going to hit command R and we're going to hold down command R while we power the computer back up. So the power, the computer is going to power back up and we're going to scroll down through the settings and we're going to wipe out all of our data. Now we're going to go into the disk utilities tab. So we're going to click on disk utilities and we are just going to go through the process. So you guys can just Google this process. We're just going to reset everything. That we had to re-update and reinstall the most recent software so we reinstalled the most recent software all right now the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to download and install zelcor we're just going to google zelcor as soon as you land on their home page it's beautiful it's right here so we're going to download for mac and we are going to choose the mac os dmg if you have an m1 mac mini you can choose the m1 option as well we're going to download and install zelcor now that we got zelcor installed the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set up the 2FA. Now, there's also ways to use a faucet. So if you don't have any flux already, you need some flux in your wallet. And I'm pretty sure it comes with flux, but I couldn't get it to work. So we're just going to send flux from KuCoin over to Zelcor. That way we got some flux on there. We're also going to withdraw some Kadena. We're going to withdraw some Bitcoin. We're going to send over a bunch of different assets. That way you guys can see how the wallets work. I'm also going to walk you guys through the process of renaming the wallets as well. This is your guys' first time installing Zellcore. We're going to come down here. We're going to sync slash register account on this device. You're going to create your username and password. This is super important. You want your username to be as long as possible and you want your password to be as long as possible. This is one of the downfalls to Zellcore. The longer your password, the longer your username, the harder it is for somebody to break into this. The downfall is you have to enter them every single time you type in or you want to open Zellcore. So it's painful to be safe, but it is what it is. So now the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a username and password in Zellcore. Now this is super important. Your username and password are your private and public key. This is your private and public key together. They take these and they turn these into a hash. So your username and password become your private key. That is how you sign for transactions. So this is super important. Also, they're not giving you 12 words. They're not. That means that if somebody wants to brute force this password, if you use a simple password, silly Billy one, two, three, or you use a password like password one, two, three, four, and somebody finds your username, well, they can probably easily brute force in and get your password out of this. So be very, very careful guys. I personally get these plates, these metal plates. And what I've done now is I also have 
a Dymo label printer because it's such a pain to like take pictures and I don't ever want to take pictures of my private keys. I don't want them stored on my phone. I don't want to take a screenshot of them. So I got a label printer. It was $15 on Amazon. And then as what I did here is I just printed out my username and password. I'm going to take them and I'm going to stick them on this plate. And then after the fact, I got metal stamps and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to stamp in my username and password into this metal plate. This goes in a safe. This gets buried. This goes somewhere safe. You don't have to worry about your house burning down because if it burns down and I just got these stickers, it's going to melt these stickers. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set up Zellcore ID, the 2FA. This is just an extra layer of security that you have to turn on. So that's the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to turn that on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over into apps. We're going to go to the apps tab. We're going to come over here. We're going to click on Zell ID. You're going to click on D 2FA and you're going to walk through the process of setting up your 2FA. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing over to KuCoin and I'm just going to withdraw some flux. So I came over here. I typed in my address. I hit confirm. And now it's going to ask me for the goodies. So there is a way to actually use a faucet inside Zellcore. It's super simple. I know I did it the first time, but I don't feel like trying to dick with it. So I'm just going to send over flux anyway. So I might as well send it over. Once that flux arrives in our wallet, then we can set up our 2FA. Now I'm just going to walk you guys through the wallet. So if we come down and we click on the overview tab, this is the first thing that I like to show new people. You have wallets. They're going to be, yours are going to be named something different. I like to rename mine so it's not confusing for new people. Wallet one, wallet two, wallet three, wallet four. So again, you come over to your portfolio tab, go down to the bottom, click the overview button. Go over to the right hand side, click the come over here on the right hand side, click the edit tab, and then that's how you can rename it. And you can change the color too if you wanted to change the color to something different as well. Each one of these wallets, for example, if I click on wallet one, I can see that I have a ton of different crypto assets. Each wallet will have its own Cadena address, it'll have its own Bitcoin address, it'll have its own Tether address, it'll have its own KD Launch address, and each one of these wallets will have its own address. Now we're going to swing over to chainweaver.network and we're going to create a new wallet. I'm going to click the I have read and agree to the terms and service. We're going to hit create new wallet. It's going to ask us for a password. Your password is what you're going to use to log into the wallet. Now it's going to give you your recovery phrase. Now this is where Zellcore and Chainweaver are different. Zellcore doesn't give you a recovery phrase. Zellcore turns your username and password into your recovery phrase. So that's how they get your hash. Here they just display it in words. So we're going to click I have read and continue. We're going to hit continue. And now we're going to go through here and you're going to record and write down each one of these private keys. And after you've done that, you hit I have safely you know, stored my keys. And now you're going to have to come through here and you're going to actually have to manually type each one of them in. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to send some Cadena from KuCoin to our new Chainweaver wallet. That way we can actually make sure we can test it. Now, after we're done testing these, we're going to disconnect it from the internet and we're done because that is the only purpose is the purpose is to get these wallet addresses. I need a Bitcoin address. I need a Cadena address. I need a Flux address. I need a Tether. Probably wanted the USDC. I want to make sure I have wrote down all of my five or 10 major addresses that I actually use. And I can always go get back in there later if I need to open it up on my computer. I don't have to connect to the internet because the Zell core doesn't need to be connected to the internet to work. It just needs to be on my device. So I don't have to actually let my laptop ever connect to the internet again to get into Zell core. I don't think anyways, pretty sure you don't have to, but even way, if I have to plug it in the internet, open up Zell core, it is what it is. It'd be simple. I'll grab my wallet address. I'll add a new token. If say KDA bet, I want to add to my Zell core wallet really easy. And then that's all it is. I just send my crypto there. It's like my bank. It's like my savings account. The idea is I never want to connect that to the internet. I never want to surf the emails. I never want to open email on that computer. I never want to connect to any other websites on that computer. I never want to give any hacker or malicious actor the opportunity to penetrate the firewall on that PC. The only purpose is it for it to store my crypto and that is it. That's the whole purpose of this. No different than a hardware wallet. We've installed 2FA. So now in Zellcore, they have to get your username, your password, and they have to get your pin. So very, very unlikely that any hacker is going to get all three of those unless you expose them. All right, sweet. So now that we got our address wrote down and I had to manually type it in, which is kind of scary, but I just double checked and we're always going to send a test transaction just to make sure. So we're going to copy this. We're going to swing over here. We're going to go to our back to our assets. I'm going to transfer all of our KDA over. 
go back to our main account. We're gonna do withdraw. Only K addresses are supported. So we're gonna test out our new address. Choose KDA, KDA network, hit confirm. All right, so now we got our KDA sent over. We tested it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna send over all of my KDA. After I send that one test transaction, it confirms, I see that one KDA in my wallet. I'm like, yep, sweet, good to go. I'm gonna send the rest over. So now, like we've said, we went through here, we've renamed all of our wallets. So in each wallet, you have different addresses. For example, I can show available balances here. You can see I have a Bitcoin wallet. If I go into wallet two, I will have a completely different Bitcoin wallet address. So I can send Bitcoin to this wallet address. I can send Bitcoin to this wallet address. I can send Bitcoin to this wallet address. I personally use one main wallet. I'm going to send Kadena, Bitcoin, Flux. And I want to make sure that I got the addresses for each one of these. So I'm going to click on Bitcoin. I'm going to click receive and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to copy this address. If I want to add an address that I do not have over here, I would come to manage assets and hit add asset. Could add Flux BSC. I wanted to grab Tether. So I'm going to add Tether BEP20 because I definitely want to send over Tether and I want to be able to do it with the BEP20. And then same with USDC. I want to add USDC as well. So we're going to do that right now. Add Tether, add USDC. And what I'm going to do is we're going to create a notepad. We're going to come over here. We're going to paste in. You see it says Flux Cellcore, right? Chainweaver right here. Chainweaver KDA. We're going to add Tether, Bitcoin. You're going to go here and make a whole list of all your wallet addresses. This way, you do not need to go open Zellcore if you want to send crypto to one of these wallets. It's on that computer. It's safe. You've already got the wallet addresses. There's no need to open it up again. You can open it up. If you want to verify that it actually was sent there, I guess you could. But I trust that when I send crypto and I can follow that transaction and I can pull up my address on a block explorer and see my addresses, I don't need to open my crypto wallet to see that my crypto has arrived there. I can check on a block explorer. And that's it, guys. I was going to go through here and show you guys how to send Bitcoin, but you guys have sent crypto before. It's super simple. You just come in there, you withdraw it from the exchange, you send it to that address. So I sent over Bitcoin, I sent over some USDT, I sent over USDC, I sent over Kadena, and I sent over Flux. So I have all five or six assets in my crypto wallet. I verified that the addresses are right, that I have saved in my notepad. I copied them from my notepad. Now I got my notepad. I'm going to go copy it. I'm going to send myself an email of my just my public wallet addresses. That way I always got it in my email if I need it. And that's it, guys. It's super simple. That computer is never going to see the light of day. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, if you guys could do me a favor and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. The reason why we also have Zellcore and Chainweaver is because we never want all of our eggs in one basket. Chainweaver is my go-to for my big Kadena bags. I'm going to keep my Kadena on the crypto wallet that was created by that blockchain. I always think that that's the safest and most secure way to store any asset. It's not bridged over into any other blockchain. Who knows, right? I trust Zellcore very much so. But I think that the safest place to keep my Kadena is on Chainweaver. I think the safest place to keep my Flux is in Zellcore. So that being said, appreciate you guys. I do not use X Wallet. I do not use any of these other wallets. I'm just going to stick with just Zellcore and just Chainweaver.